The Pit is one of the most iconic maps ever created in Halo's franchise. So when I heard that it's getting remade in Halo Infinite and going to be put in the matchmaking, you know your boy's gonna get excited as it's one of my all-time favorite maps. And so I took a special interest in seeing what kind of changes that they made with this map as we've seen it in Halo 3, we've seen it in Halo Reach, Halo 4, as well as a remade Forged Lego version that got really popular within Halo 5. And reviewing the gameplay, I saw there were at least 15 significant changes made to the Pit in Halo infinite that i wanted to bring up to you guys in this video so if you guys like these analytical videos make sure you tap that like button as it is the best way to help support the content on this channel let's take on that youtube algorithm i believe it so I took time and actually analyzed the gameplay that we got from the Halo 3 throwback event back at the HS Orlando event. I would take in mind that this is most likely the competitive version of the map that we're looking at right now. So with the social version coming into play, which we do know that the pit will be put into the rotation, at least for the competitive side of things with season two and be launched within Halo Infinite soon after the launch of Forge. So I broke this video up into two major sections, the sandbox that we're gonna be able to play around with and the geometry that's changed with this version of the pit. So let's not waste any more time and get right into those details. First, let's talk about the items in the sandbox that are the same as they are in like the traditional version of the pit. I'll be referring to as Halo 3's version of the pit as like the truest version of it right there. So what's gonna be the same on this map? Well, we have the sniper rifle, the rocket launcher, overshield, the battle rifle at each base, as well as the plasma pistol are gonna be all in the same spot you expect them to be on the pit. But what's gonna change this time around is that the psychic is not gonna be inside the base where the mauler used to spawn in Halo 3. We have an assault rifle on the wall instead of a battle rifle near green box slash long haul area. We have the needler is actually replacing the shotgun in that shotgun closet corner right there. And that's the reason why is because we have the heat wave, which is replacing the sword on this map as well. Now, a lot of pro players have had their issues when it comes to having the sword within competitive. So that's why we might see the heat wave on the competitive version of this map. But I could assume with the social version of it, we could see the sword return. Some of the newer items involved with Halo Infinite Sandbox added into here is that we have the repulsor underneath the bridge. We also have the drop wall in long haul. Now, not a significant change on this next one, but worth mentioning that we have a scrap cannon at the top of each tower, not a machine gun turret like we do traditionally. Next, let's go into the map geometry and similarities that we have here. So one of the same things that we still have the banana jump that's on this map, but it definitely is changed up a little bit with Halo Infinite. One thing it looks like maybe you might have to sprint to be able to get up to that banana jump rather than having just to jump regularly. As we did see pros kind of struggle with the jump at first, having to time it just right so you can make that banana jump. You can crouch jump it, so that's very important. Though a new thing about the banana jump is that you're able to walk around the edge of it. So now you're not just stuck in that little corner. You can kind of use it as a bit of a platform to peek around rather than just being like a little spot to kind of get a little surprise on somebody hanging around the training area. A big change for this map is the OS drop down. When I first heard this, I thought, okay, so it's gonna be like in Halo 4, it had like the drop down from sword down to overshield. It's a little bit like that, but different where the outside edge is now open and you can jump down to the overshield. You will now have to jump clamber to get up to the green box location where previously it was just a nice well-timed crouch jump. I believe this is probably involved with what Michael Score said about how that they scaled the map to Halo Infinite Sandbox and, and different gameplay. This might be one of those things. The ramp alongside each platform on the map has a completely different angle. They actually change it to a 90 degree angle off of the direction you would normally go off of it, which wouldn't make sense, right? If it is like a catwalk, you kind of want to just keep moving that same direction. The reason why they changed that is because then they added in the curb slide ability you can do off of that as well, as you see right here in this clip. At first, when I saw the change, I was like, I don't know about that. Why not just change it to make it have better map flow? But then I see you kind of lift it open so then people can do curb slides off it. Glad to see 343 is embracing that mechanic. The boxes within the base, like hold the flag, are at a different angle now this time. In traditional of the ranked version of the map, the boxes are right in front. You just jump up, jump right onto the platform. Now on the Halo Infinite version, the boxes are pushed off to the side. I think it just kind of makes it so then the tra traversal is a little less smooth, just to kind of slow it down a little bit. Because I would say that maybe it might be a little too easy to get it out of the base originally. So I think I actually might like this change here a bit. And of course, the big change here is that there is an overshield platform now, which is on the outside edge of the map, but you can fall off of, which is a new addition where they removed the barrier right there with that chain link fence. Now it's completely open. Open, leaving some quite some interesting moves like a repulsor throwing you off the map which is always a fun thing to do in Halo Infinite. Make it so you have to place your nades a little bit more methodically on this rather than just throwing them in down into the corner having to jump around
down the bottom of that pit and just gain the easy grenade kill with it being opened up you have to be a little bit more precise with your grenade places which actually i really enjoy now they kept this change from the previous version of the ranked version as you can see there's a box that puts you up to the platform in the social version in halo 3 there is no box but in the ranked version they did add in a box for you to jump up the platform to give you a little extra mobility in there and now we'll see if they brought this in for just ranked or if it will be part of social as well and i hope they make this change because i'd really like this one aspect of the classic version of the pit there were these open slots that you could actually snipe through when it comes to the training barriers as well as the top tower barriers in halo infinite it's just a block that you can't shoot through and there were so many times while playing halo 3 i was able to cheekily snipe people through those little slots yeah it's a rare occasion but those moments really stand out and they're really fun to do I really hope that the final version of the pit does add these little slots that you can shoot through just to provide a little bit of a I got you moment. Now map knowledge is one way to get better at Halo Infinite, especially on the ranked side of things, but another way to get better at ranked is by playing free for all and grinding out how to get better at that one for your individual skill. If you want to get better, make sure you check out this video right here, 10 quick tips that instantly improve your gameplay right there. That's not a joke. Thank you much for watching, greatly appreciate it, catch you on the next one, peace out.